Hey guys, welcome to My Millennial Money. I'm Glenn James. This guy is... John Pigeon. And today we've got Nathan joining us. Hey Nathan, how are you? Hey James, how are we? Good. You may Very have well. seen Nathan on his skateboard. In his, on my way here. <laughs> on your way here. Yeah, he's a Nathan now. So. <laughs> um, you did skate, didn't you? Yeah, I skated. Yeah, I couldn't see your car. Yeah. yeah. Mm, fantastic. So, uh, we're talking all things, I guess, money, business, life. Uh, Before we get into this, you guys didn't tell me where in RM Williams today. I didn't get the memo. Did you? Do you have RM Williams? I do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm right. an Australian. Yeah, wow. that's uh, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Andrew Forrest who yeah. just rescued them. <laughs> yeah. Um, the last time someone wore shorts in here, he got booted out too. That's right. But he was the host of the main show. Yeah. <laughs> I'm barely wearing shorts. I'm wearing half shorts. Yeah, well, the problem is I can't see up your freaking oh, crutch to breakfast this morning. Do you want to change the way I'm sitting? He, he was like on the show and um, basically we got complaints that they could see what he had for breakfast. Here we go. You wearing short shorts? Right. He was wearing the they shortest exactly of shorts. He got it flaunted, I say. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Just give it up, John. Yeah. <laughs> now, Nathan, you're, um, you're on the podcast two years ago, basically-ish. Mm-hmm. And a few things have changed and I wanted to kind of swing back around. I think that episode, you listened to it before you came in today. I did. Um, it was probably more on the influencer stuff and all that stuff, a bit of your story. There was some money stuff. I just couldn't contribute in that part yeah. as much <laughs> to know what I was doing. Uh, but I guess what I want to do with this episode is talk about, you know, money, what it means to you, all that stuff. We're going to talk about the business stuff with what you're doing with Milestone Strength mm -hmm. and your... Because you're ultimately a business owner. Yes. By the way, I've got a ton load of people who follow me online. Um, awesome. As a side note, yeah. As a side note, yeah. yeah. Uh, we'll have a bit of a break and then we'll talk about the influencer Instagram stuff and all that. Hey, I'm all yours. Let's do it. Sweet. So, Nath. Let's get a backstory. What were your money views growing up? Good, bad, ugly? I was very blessed to have parents that were very good with money. And so money was never something I had to think about. We were never spoiled by any means, but we never went without. Okay. So money's never been a huge focus in my life. I think the only time I considered money, particularly when I was like leaving school, was more just like what are the social norms that you're supposed to you're supposed to finish school and go to university and get that job that earns this money and do that thing yeah okay um and then finishing school i realized that i didn't know what i wanted to do which gave me a bit of a freak out because well, how am i going to earn the money to buy the house to do the thing um so generally speaking was was money a good conversation at the dinner table or was it not money wasn't a, wasn't a conversation wasn't a conversation wasn't really a conversation all. yeah we were never really brought up being like save your pocket money or mm. Um, I'm sure I was told that. Once I was out of school, it definitely was. I can't tell you the amount of time I got told to read. What's that one that they, every book? Rich Dad, Poor Dad? No, there's another one. The Shoeless Investor? Yeah, that one. Yeah. Uh, and I just didn't Couldn't do it. Read. That just pushed me away because yeah. the more someone tells me to do a thing, the less I'm inclined to do it. Yeah. Sorry, Mum. Awesome. Um, Oppositional out, Defiance Mom. Disorder or whatever they call just it. Just a jerk. Yeah. 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 All that, yeah. <laughs> Essentially. Um, but yeah, I just... It was never something that was... In Money's never been an interest. Mm. I'd rather have fun and let money come in if it comes in. And I've been very lucky to never have a problem earning money. Yeah, It's more what I do with it once I've got it was the thing I needed to learn. Mm. So I guess, you know, if you do an autopsy looking back at your childhood, you actually can just go, okay, looking back, just some basic lessons that I learned. Mum and dad, they weren't lunatics, credit junkies. It was- No, no, no. They were both We didn't go without. Good. It was sensible. It wasn't erratic. Yeah, 100%. And, um, while you don't, you know, track your dollar on dollar on dollar, you're not erratic with your spending and a big not waste. Anymore. No, not anymore. <laughs> no, I definitely was. When yeah. I was uh, from like 18 to 24. How old are you now? 32. Yeah, sweet. I like had several magazine subscriptions and I bought, I had a, I get a blockbuster video when that existed. I yeah. could re like compare that to my DVD collection. Yeah. I worked opposite a HMV and was in there every day. The amount of money I would have wasted on DVDs. So did you, would you say you're a, a spender by nature? Like if you flipped a coin, it, it would land on Nathan McCullum is a spender? <laughs> yes and no. Cause now I have trouble spending money on some things. Some things I'm happy to, I, I won't think twice about. Yeah, I'm going to, Want to go to New York? Yeah, we'll do it. But buy tickets. Yeah. Not going to think about it. But I'll overthink buying a table from Kmart because I'm like, ah, oh, might be a better one somewhere that I'll get for cheaper. But you never really got 
stuck into any bad habits though, did you? No, I've never had credit card debts. I've never been in debt. Yeah. I've had like loans, but I've just paid them off as you do and mm. paid them off and been fine. Which is interesting, isn't it? From a money point of view, didn't get discussed growing up as like, it's just a, a part of life that wasn't that important. Yeah. Um, or maybe it was, but you, you didn't realise it. But sometimes you can try too hard at something. Yeah, I often find, and this is really, you know, I, 10 seconds ago I hadn't had this thought, so this is as wild as it's going to get. <laughs> Correct. When the people go, oh, I learned growing up that you've got to get a credit card and pay it off on time to get a credit score. You've got to always be paying something off because you may as well be paying something off. You really hear all the terrible money myths that get instilled in people. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the bad crap that's untrue is what people are drilled into. So, I guess if we do anything on this podcast, it's to break that societal um, crap that's actually fake mm. and false. Yeah. That I didn't get a credit card until I was 29. Yeah. Because yeah. I was like, why owe people money to spend the money that I've actually got rather than yeah. spending so money I don't have. There's some logic in there. There's maybe some underlying values and beliefs from family that uh, organically went that way. Yeah, and I've always been a very... Uh, like I've been full of common sense. Yeah. That's just the way I've always lived life. It's like, if it makes logical sense, do that thing. For me, it, it didn't make sense to spend money I didn't have, didn't get the credit card. Yeah. So you probably answered this just now, but what, what would you say your philosophy on money would be? Now? Mm. And get more. Yeah. <laughs> spend less. The more you, yeah, the more you've got, the better things are. It's never, I've never been someone that's focused on money. It's never been like, no, no, I need to have the $2 million by the time I'm this. Mm. It's more just like I want to live well. Money generally tends to help you live well. Yeah. I'd love, I'm, a, I'm a creature of comfort, so I like having a nice house and a nice car and being able to travel when I want and having money allows you to do those things. But at the same time, work for me this morning, I, I wouldn't have earned a dollar today for what I've done so far. But I know eventually what I've done, I enjoy doing it and it'll lead to money down the track. And, and I remember when I first sat down with you two and a half years ago, we had this conversation around money and it's like, well, yeah, I'm not really fussed about it. don't know what's coming in, don't really know what's going out, but yeah. I'm, I'm enjoying life and, and it's, it's not really a focus at all and just organically about being passionate about something, yeah. you've uh, been able to be successful. So it's, it's an interesting journey. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely not the, the norm, the way I've done it. As I said, I've never done anything like crazy or illogical or gambled everything I have, everything I've like any risk I've taken to be very calculated and I've always had like a, I'll do this because one, I want to do it, but also it's going to help me in this way. Mm. So there's been some sort of common sense in that. So when you said before, like, I want to get more money, it's, mm -hmm. I guess there's two types of camps. There's this camp of, um, you know, I want to have the private jet. I want to have the two Ferraris. I want to, you know, get the photos taken in front of all this superficial stuff because I want to portray this um, thing of success and power and all that. But from what I'm hearing from you, you just know that money gives you more options. I've just employed my best friend. He now works for me full time. We get to hang out every day. We went yeah. snorkeling this morning. That was work. That's like, that's success to me. I've, yeah. I work with two of my best friends and my big thing now with earning more money is like, because then they can have more money and then we can all do cool shit. Let's go rock climbing in the Blue Mountains for a week because we can. Yeah. And that's a cool thing. We're living and having fun doing that. And that's a byproduct of the money. So we work hard for the thing to be able to enjoy time together. Yeah. And that's what I really like. I err on that side of the money discussion than the... I want to go to this seminar, get pumped up. Mm. Everyone, you're going to be a millionaire. You're going to be successful. Yeah. Where a lot of those mindsets and that, it's a facade and there's no real wealth yeah. or anything underneath. 100%. I uh, can't tell you how many people I've turned down sending me those. They've clearly gone to a seminar and, hey, we can digitally market your brand for this and guarantee you X amount of dollars per week. And no I thanks. think generally people who uh, listen to this, watching this, are, are the same type of people. You attract who you are, don't you, to some extent. But like those that follow you on Instagram, like you you see your body every day, right? Flexing, <laughs> Sorry posing, that, yeah. jumping, twisting, turning, backflips, yeah. whatever. Like that industry, and no disrespect to the industry, is full of egos. Mm -hmm. And I sit here with this guy now and not having known him for three years is down to earth, um, 
really true values, doesn't want anything Thank you. Uh, extravagant, right? Do you, do you get that? Yeah. Um, whereas... As soon as they're off camera, you're an arrogant dick. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm not going to go any further detail, but sure. But maybe... <laughs> But maybe that's um, the success of who you are because a lot of the industry is quite the opposite. Yeah, there, yeah, there's definitely egos in this world. I think the fact that I also fell into this world from doing the fashion blogging thing and becoming into fitness and working with my best friend and I was not an expert at it when I started doing it by any means. I'm still not an expert at it. And I've been around people long enough to see the people that think they're better than others or think they're the experts. They're generally the ones that aren't. Aren't, yeah. Mm. Um, I'm surrounded by people that keep me humble, mm. keep me grounded. I can't tell you every day my business partner will be like, that's not how you do that. <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> that's not correct. Oh, yeah. okay, cool. Sorry. I'm still figuring it out as we go along. Yeah. Yeah. So. Mm. Yeah, I think it's great. So on, um, I guess, with your own personal money, like we know that, um, well, I believe we need to give, save and spend because I think there's people worse off than us. We need to look after future us, but we need to enjoy life and have experiences. Yeah. So a couple of things there. Charity, generosity, does that fit into your constitution with money? Yeah, I, I don't think with that stuff. I generally just sign up and just, yeah, yeah. I, I don't, I honestly couldn't tell you the name of the charities I donate to. Yeah. Several of them just come to my door and be like, "Do you want to donate to this?" So say, this yes. is why they do the door knocking and the <laughs> yeah, shopping. Yeah, I'm the idiot that like, always yes. says yes. yes. Every time if you go through McDonald's and they go, "Do you want to add two dollars to this?" I will never say no. Oh, so okay, <laughs> this is so weird. Don't, don't anyone that's trying to yeah, don't, don't come to your charities yeah. now. <laughs> Hit me up. Do you, do you read books? <laughs> yes. Can I give you this book? Yeah, sure. It's called The Life You Can Save. I interviewed the founder on it. Um, Peter Singer. Okay. I finished a book last night, so I'm, I'm due. Yeah. Let's go. Um, it will change. It will rock your world. So, the giving and generosity, absolutely, you're not accruing wealth just for yourself. No. if I think if you got the opportunity to help someone, why would you not help someone? But it's not a, an intentional, I really support this cause, this benefit. You know, my uncle died because he no. died playing chess. So, I'm going to have a chess foundation of- Yeah death on chess boards and so okay can't see the amount of people that happens to it's crazy <laughs> um so we know that you buy experiences mm -hmm. so you very much. jump on a plane when we can go on rock climb snorkel or whatever yeah. so investing for the future of nathan what are you doing what's your philosophy and mindset uh i'm someone that just says yes to things so if an opportunity comes up generally i'll say yes I've been really, really blessed to be able to do some of the most amazing things I've done for work. Yeah. Since I was on last time, I ran a, I created a um, TV series for IGTV when Instagram launched that. And Instagram actually funded this, but it was just called Fit for Adventure. And I traveled the world showing my favorite places to train, eat, and adventure. So I went to New York and London and I bungee jumped off things and I skydived and I went rafting and I did helicopter tours, open door over New York. I did all these amazing, amazing things that were paid for, which was awesome. Mm. And then I could show people, hey, this is what this looks like. Yep. And it was so cool. And I was actually due to do a second series of it. And then COVID happened and I've that's just put on the back burner. But that will be something I'll continue to do because sometimes it's spending my money to do those things. And by doing that, it's allowed me to open up other doors and brands have seen that or people have seen that or companies have seen that and being like, oh, we actually do this. We'd love for you to come and be part of that. Ultimate positive feedback this. loop. <laughs> 100%. And that's the spending money to make money. I yep. didn't do it because I thought I might get paid to do it. I did it because I thought it'd be a great experience. And I think that translates when I share that and allowed me to then do it for a job. And I can't, the, the amount of people that have gone, I saw you went to that place and I went and did it and that was incredible. That cenote you did in Tulum was amazing. Yeah, I love awesome. that. That was so cool. I had to go check that out. That's really yeah, cool. The, I got the to fact like, that it didn't cost you a cent is even better. Yeah, it's amazing. And I'm so lucky. And I get to take my girlfriend on those things. And yeah. like, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. And so the last quadrant, um, so investing money for future Nathan, what are you doing there? Saving. Uh, I'm much better at saving than I probably was. Earning more money helps. Um, I'm someone that if I see money there, I'm more inclined to put more money in. So the more money I've got there, the more money I want to save, which helps. It's great. Like, and that's like, if we can just pause this conversation, everyone listen here, <laughs> it gets easier to save money once you've got money. Yeah. It's it just, it's, 
And that's why I would just really encourage you, if you are struggling to save money, please just keep at it. Even if it's $20 a week, let's set a target. I want you to get to $500. Yeah, because once you've got that $500, you're like, oh, yeah. I could put another $500 yeah. by the end I of the year. I want you to then set another target. So please yeah. know that it is harder. And you guys will probably agree, it's okay if you're starting up because you've got to have money to save money. And it's like, oh, do I pay my rent of $220 a week in the share house or save $200 a week? We know you've got to pay rent. So, mm. it's okay. While you're establishing your life and career, I want you to just get by even if it's minimal savings but no debt. Yeah. If you just do that, I promise you, <laughs> once you get through to the next level of your career or life, it will come. So anyway, I just wanted to jump in because yeah, no, Papa Glenn, the I just <laughs> I want to just encourage people with that because you said it right. Like it's easier once you've got money. Yeah, but have, having that mindset to say, well, I've got a thousand dollars in the bank. I want to create or turn that into two thousand, right? Versus saying, well, I've got a thousand. I might go and spend five hundred of it. It's a it's a mindset thing that's yeah. obviously been with you um, since growing up. Okay, so yeah. you're getting good with. Uh, Saving physical cash, yeah. which cash gives us options to deploy for the future. So, if an investment idea comes up or a business idea or a property deal or yeah. whatever. Um, what about real estate and shares and super? Do you have any views on that? I have super. Yeah. I pay my own super. Obviously, being a business, I pay that myself. Um, yeah. I bought a house this year. So, we've got property. Um, and you live in that house? I live in that house. Yeah. Welcome yeah. to the neighborhood. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm local. Yeah. <laughs> I'm also building a lot of things to create passive income around me that aren't reliant solely on me. I do have a job that relies a lot on me and my face and me taking my shirt off. Yeah. Um, and obviously, I that's going to have a ceiling. And I'll hit that point where it's no one needs to see the 60-year-old without a shirt on. <laughs> I'm glad you mentioned that because I've got this baby oil right here. We might. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to take your shirt off. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and by your shirt, he means Glenn's shirt. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I am working on building things there that are bigger than me that don't rely on me being the face of things because I've been very, very lucky to build brands around myself and what I like and, and who I am. And I want to get other things going in the meantime that start with me but are bigger than me. Yeah. So there are awesome. other things I'm working on. And that's kind on. of like this My Millennial Money thing. Like it's bigger than me now. Like... I'll put something up in the Facebook group and someone will complain because it's spam. You know what I mean? Like it's just, and that's awesome because we need to have this thing yeah. that we're a part of something that's bigger than ourselves. Yeah, hundred percent. And that's interesting. So you've got your house to live in, you contribute to super. That was a fairly recent thing, by the way. I didn't do that for many years because yeah. I forgot it existed yeah. when I was younger. Once I started, once I left my full-time job that paid my super for me, and then was working for myself. I just didn't pay super for three years because I forgot it was a thing I needed to do. Mm. So yeah. last year when I was going through and doing my tax stuff, I put some big contributions towards it and I do that again now. Yeah, yeah. And that's, I'm adulting. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, welcome. Big, big, big boy now. <laughs> yeah, growing um, up so fast. And then I guess it's a good segue because the business for many of us business owners, it is an asset that produces money mm -hmm. and has value. Uh, like you said before, the key person... Uh, you can't really sell you as a brand because if you broke both your legs and, you know, put on weight and you weren't nice without a shirt on, that's hard to sell. In fitness it is. Yeah. I've been very lucky to build my brand bigger than fitness though. Totally. And that's what I want to transition to. Yeah. So as a, because I fundamentally believe that for me personally, I can get more return out of putting my effort into a business than putting money into the stock market, yeah. for example. Because I can yeah. get 30% a year in the business and 8% a year on the stocks or whatever and have more fun doing Because yeah, it. it relies on you and you get out what you put in. Exactly. 100% agree. So, you've, got a, you've got two types of businesses, don't you? You've got one that is a cash cow, makes hay while the sun shines, and you've got something that you can sell a system or an asset yeah. in 10, 20 years' time. You're, you're saying, well... I'm making hay while the sun shines now, but I also want to create some um, passive income in, inside that. Yes. So I want to, uh, one, everyone, if you haven't already, uh, check out Nathan on Instagram. His handle is Nathan. Uh, and just before we get on to the business stuff, 
you're, you've got a podcast. Mm-hmm. What's the podcast called? The Milestone Strength Show. There you go. So check out the Milestone Strength Show. What's the podcast about? Who's it for? The podcast is because me and my business partner, here, Milestone Lane, talk to each other so much and often find the conversations like other people will be with us and be like, that was pretty funny. So we just started doing that. And he's the smartest guy I know. And so I learned so much from him every day. I figured, why not share that with other people? We probably should have had him here today. He's much better yeah. than me. <laughs> yeah. Much better. Yeah. Um, yeah. Should I leave? Yeah. Mm, we'll get Lane in. Yeah. He, yeah. He and I have really good conversations and I'm much more the face of our business and always have been because I've been more comfortable on camera and doing that. But so much of me is him. Mm. And I know how to say the things that I know he believes in or he's taught me. So when we run our seminars, I'm just regurgitating stuff that he says, but just in a more dynamic so, way. So is it, would you say it's fitness health related or is it Majority. humor? Or is it- it's a bit of everything. We did yeah. an episode on Harry Potter. We talked for 45 minutes on Harry Potter because yeah. God, I love Harry Potter. Um, it just depends on what we want to do. Mm. We've The podcast has never been about making money. It's mm. about having fun. Yeah. Bit of an outlet. Yeah, and it's oh. another outlet. It builds a brand and people learn from it. He uh, He's also studying psychology. I'm pretty sure he's just finished his master's or he's just about to finish that. So he's not only knows about sports science and diets and training, he also mindset. knows how to look after the mindset. Yeah, and that's yeah. something that yeah. I'm really big on is about mental health and positivity and encouraging people and looking at creating better healthier patterns for the way we think so that's something that we talk about there as well and our most popular episodes are generally about like mindset breaking bad habits how to be a positive person all right nice. get him on next week's episode it will be with lane we've cool. got a bit of time before these goes up so part two we'll yeah, bring him in for part two yeah cool uh so check out sorry lane <laughs> yeah <laughs> right in the end, man. uh so check out that and that's interesting um also How's the coffee tasting while it's cooled down? I That's gone. I finished that before Oh, was it started. nice? Yeah, it was delicious. Oh, Good work. Lee coffee. Yeah. In fact, you can actually look in the show notes. Uh, I now sell my own coffee. If you haven't looked already, you can buy a delicious coffee. Uh, I, I, you know what? I don't want to give it to him, but it was delicious coffee. Was it? I, yeah. I and, we, it. and we contract roasted Glee and they ship it and all that. So, that's just another business thing I'm doing. It's like the Glenn James signature. Yeah. So. And I'll put my invoice in for that shout out at the end. Please do. So. Yeah. Yeah. 12 grand a shout out. Yes. Yeah. That's right. I've up my rates. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. And that was a joke. I have no idea how much he charges. We're not talking about actual figures today. So, <laughs> yeah. whatever. Yeah. I can say that I don't charge $12,000 for a shout out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, your business, Milestone Strength, we got sidetracked with the mm. podcast plug. Awesome. Check it out. So, what's the business do? So, we are online personal trainers, essentially. We, this year, uh, built an app. So, we have our own training app now, which we're, when this goes live, we will have updated again. Um, so, it's whether you're at home, in gym, training with bands, training with full weight setups, whether you want to lose weight, gain weight, whether you're training to compete in a certain sport, we program for that. Training and nutrition, uh, it's nine ninety seven a week for both. So it's fairly cheap and affordable. Runs through our app. Everything in there is like video description of me demonstrating, Lane explaining how to do the thing. We do full recipes, shopping list. Um, we have a Facebook group that we have a full communion of people that are all training together. And that's the amazing thing. You talk about the My Millennial Money thing with there. It's the same with Milestone. Mm. I am really bad at Facebook. I don't use it very often. And I get on there and people will ask me a question and four other people have answered the question for me because they now know the answer from paying attention. Well, it's it's like so good. People send me a message on Instagram. Oh, I've got a, um, you know, my partner's just moved from France to Australia. He's got some, I'm like, I've got no idea about this. Ask the Facebook group. There'll be someone a lot smarter in there. Yeah, and it's <laughs> incredible. So we've got this a really, really- What's the Facebook group called? It's the milestone. You actually can't be part of it until you are- uh, 9.95 a week. Oh, okay. So it's member it's, only. It's only members. Yeah. Okay. I I think I know. Two years ago, we discussed that I'm horrendous with my own personal health. <laughs> Maybe I need you to join up. it. I mean, Maybe I need to. We probably already are. It's like one of your Foxtel subscriptions. Yeah, I can help you. And that's the thing. We tried to. We talk about doing this for a long time because we had like just PDF based programs. We someone would like sign up and we'd write a one off program and send it to them. Mm. This is a way for us to continuously help people for as long as they want. It's updating every four weeks. We do four week blocks of training and then diet. Anywhere in the world. Anywhere in the yeah. world. So if if 
someone's like Glenn locally, mm-hmm. can he book Nathan out for an hour or half an hour or 15 minutes? Is no, I don't do any one-on-one stuff. Right. Lane also doesn't do any one-on-one. He used to when he used to work out of Impact Gym. Yeah. We've just opened Milestone HQ, our own space. So last time I was on the podcast, I actually said I wanted to yeah. create a space that's built for content creation. We've done that. Yeah. So we have our own private gym now and office and podcast studio and photo studio where we film all of our stuff and put that up online. So you've um, got that space, but you, you don't have clients in it. It's just purely for recording and video. We will run seminars out of there. Yeah, It's sure. big enough gym that we have We have a fully functioning gym. We have the best leg gym on the coast. So yeah. if you train legs, we're the yeah. place to be. And this is interesting. Um, at the end of last year, I did a an investing seminar and we sold tickets to it online. Yeah. And I had 12 people come to my house and I did the seminar live in front of people. So at least... I could see people in the room. So, it's like I said something and it's like, yep, it's making sense. Yeah. And there was a few hundred people watching. Yeah. So, is that the type of thing that you will do in terms we of won't, seminars? We or? won't let them watch. It's a purely in-person experience. So, you have to fly in if you... Are we you doing travel boot camp? Well. Oh, so, okay, obviously, yep. when the world reopens, we were supposed to do two full tours in 2020, uh, US and European tour. And obviously, that didn't happen based on COVID. So, that made it really hard and we had to reevaluate the way we did things. We did run two 12-week challenges and we did part of them was online training seminars so we did a bodyweight training seminar and an in-gym training seminar but there is a big difference between doing something online particularly with fitness and having someone in person for that experience and that's something that we bring more of a personality to they get to have that so with um respect to covid last year yeah uh, a lot of the fitness industry was majorly affected wasn't it gym shut down yeah, everything absolutely. else your model is very very different to that of the standard 24 hour gym yeah uh, how were you affected and to, to what depth we benefited we were very very lucky to already have online training programs mm. my training style already had a lot of calisthenics bodyweight movements in it so it wasn't when i transitioned to doing at home programs no one was like you didn't do that before. They go, yeah, yeah, we've seen you do handstands. We've seen you do that yeah. stuff. We know you train that way. Um, my following grew. I doubled my following in the past 12 wow. months. Um, and milestone subscriptions actually doubled. So you're saying you saw COVID coming and prepared for it well in advance. Yeah, four years in advance. Yeah. We were, <laughs> That's we were right, well yeah. ahead of the trend. <laughs> yeah. So with this milestone strength and the face-to-face seminars, I saw, I think, before COVID and all that, like... Uh, some people I follow online, like there's this Pilates guru and they go down to Olympic Park and there's a big session. You go along for the de- uh, mm. an hour session, bring your mat. There's the influencers, the, um, the Bikram yoga guy or whatever, like the head of it. Yeah. Although he was a bit seedy, wasn't he, in the end? <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't go into that. Okay, yep. Um, <laughs> so, is that the type of... Just so I can understand. Yes, essentially. So, so the, the way a, we what? did them uh, in 2019, we did two lots we did one in the us in new york and then we did one where we went down england so we did manchester birmingham and london and all of those were new york was a two-day seminar we trained one day all went out for dinner that night came back and did the second day we changed the format for england and just did single day training sessions and then we all go out and socialize afterwards yeah so we're creating this community and just um for people who are interested and i guess it's probably public knowledge how many people go to those boot camp one day sessions uh we capped it at i think 20 20 people and what type of price point i don't remember yeah (laughs) i think money's not important no no yeah honestly it wasn't it was enough for us to fund it yeah and i mean you're not rocking up for three grand let's no 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 i think it was maybe 200 ish yeah okay but i spent that money on dinner that night i paid for everyone to come to dinner yeah much to lane's dismay because again money not something we talked about doing i was like ah it's fine we'll do it and And it was it was a cool experience we had a great time and we didn't lose money we just didn't make any money doing the first one we did on the second one we made enough for us to travel through europe and cover it and have these amazing experiences and the brands we work with then saw that. So Grenade, who is a sponsor of ours, came aboard and they're like, we oh. want to sponsor your 2020 ones. This now. is so, so hilarious. Like, because when we did our live podcast events, like the first handful, like Sydney, Melbourne, uh, Brisbane, like the Brisbane one, <laughs> I put my card on the bar and I just said to everyone, <laughs> bar's open, whatever. Halfway through the seminar, the lady comes up to me. She's like, 
it's at twelve hundred dollars the card. I'm like, <laughs> that came out sloth. All right, I uh, I said just put anything. Apparently, we're doing shots, are we? <laughs> so, but the last live event we did before COVID in Sydney, it was the first one we made money on. Yeah. So it was that kind of. Mm. But the whole purpose wasn't really to lose money. It was to just do engagement and be That's out there. It. And you, you get to yeah. experience your customers and see what they like. And, and we learned from that. Each one, we get better and better. We're now planning the ones that we can do for 2021 in how we can do them, whether we're in Australia, whether we're traveling. There's options. We know how we want to adapt to that, which is really cool. Tell me, um, when we went from Brisbane to Sydney to Melbourne, we probably didn't change the content a lot. The, the audience was very similar, just lived in a different state. How did you go with the, uh, having to change the content up given that you're in different countries? Uh, how do you mean? Sorry. Like in terms of what you what you display to the audience, did you have to think about it differently, or is it just fitness is fitness? Rinse, rinse, rinse and repeat. We have yeah. our way of doing things. It's pretty eye opening as well, seeing how many cues and technique changes. Teaching someone how to squat, it seems like a fairly simple thing, and there is so much that goes into it that you can show them in person that they don't get from a video. Mm. So while our online format really works, and we can definitely help people that next level sometimes is needed. And we do recommend if someone's never trained before and they're coming in, that's not how you do it. <laughs> Your knees are going to be... Oh, yeah. oh, and that's crack the cracks in the old so. pavement here. <laughs> yeah. So that's one of the things that educating people there, if anyone comes and they've never, never trained before, yeah. we would never try and sell them into a program. We'd yeah. say go see a PT for a few sessions mm -hmm. before you come because then you get an idea of what you're doing because mm. yeah. um, you can't help someone if you're helping them the wrong way to start with. Uh, so. Yeah. So you mentioned before we press record that you said a couple of things on the last podcast a couple of years ago because I really want to drill down into these goals and business goals. Mm -hmm. Three things you mentioned that were kind of, oh, I would like to do this one day. Yeah. You know, and we put things out into the ether and have a bit of a plan. They actually came to fruition. Yeah. We um, bought a house, I built a gym, a office. We traveled the world doing what we wanted to do. Yeah. Done. Yeah. Take I had, me home, Jesus. Had, I'm yeah, done. I had a one... I think I said that as well was I wanted to, with the influencer thing, because I've always seen that as being a bit of a dirty word. Mm. And it, ha it still has the connotations. Like mm. you gave me a little sneak peek of some of the questions people asked for this. Yeah. People don't see it as being a legitimate job and it kind of isn't for some people. Yeah. And I've always tried to build myself to be bigger than that. And so I don't have one-off jobs. I don't do a thing because someone's paying me money. I've got four brands I work with. And I've worked with now for two years continuously as an ambassador for them in the same way Chris Hemsworth is an ambassador for TAG or whichever mm. his watch brand is. Who are you an ambassador for at the moment? Gymshark, Grenade, JBL and Whoop. And and have they aligned clearly with your values and beliefs? Is that, is They're all that brands I chosen? liked and used yeah. prior to signing with them. Yeah, yeah, which is awesome. So Gymshark I was with last time we spoke and I've been mm. with them for three years now. Grenade was a brand that I was semi-affiliated with. I had a contract with another supplement brand that distributed them. Yeah kind of weird um and now i work exclusively with them and, and would you say is that why influencers out there potentially botch what they've got because yeah, they, they go to 12 value. different brands a year and yeah. there's no sincerity and no integrity in what they're doing mm. and that's i'm generalizing there some people do it really well but i think that's the problem with that and that's never been me and i probably could have made more money earlier on in my career by doing that i've got a friend that did it very very well in new york as a blogger he worked with every brand that came to him and did a thing and that was his brand was yeah. just like I'm showing you different options of things showcasing mm. and that worked for him that was never me because I'm never going to talk about a brand I've never used no. whereas the brands I've got now it's worked out because these brands now know me and my brand and they've contributed things JBL set up the full sound system and our podcast studio at HQ Grenade funded two big walls and we've got fridges full of like Grenade products and they are ready for us to travel the world and do things as a partner with them and that's amazing. Yeah, nice. I'll say this, like people might be thinking, oh, what about brands with my millennial money and all the stuff that we're doing? Uh, number one, we don't work for free and I don't think anyone should. If you're out there working for free, stop right now, you're probably a slave. Like, But but when you first start out- Yeah, that's right. But definitely gotta you've got to- You've got to put things. in, it's give and take. You got to, but like now I've, you know, we've got three staff, some contractors, we're not running a kid's birthday party. This is real and we don't work for free. Wait, wait. I don't get a party bag at the end? <laughs> Maybe. 
It's your new best behaviour. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> we haven't finished yet. You might be able to have a lollipop. Too many calories in the lolly bag for you. <laughs> yeah, I skated here. I'll burn them off. It's fine. But number number two, we turn away more money from brands than we accept. Um, the amount of matched betting and all that crap that approaches. It's like, oh, we want to get on your podcast. I'm like, nope, no deal. The amount of forex trading crap that approaches us. We want to get in front of your audience. Nah, no deal. I like money. Don't get me wrong. I want to earn as much money as easy as possible, <laughs> but it's this, and we might talk about it probably after the break about the integrity side of it, but we, are we going to get it right every time? No, but we need to earn some money to do this, to give it to you at no cost. Mm. And that does mean partnership. And I think it comes back to, again, aligning with your values and beliefs of what you're about. Mm. That was a bit of a rant, but whatever. I uh, liked it. Good rant. Yeah. You didn't get but too it's, aggressive. It's unapologetic and people might judge. You just hit the nail on the head. That's been my whole brand. I'm unapologetically myself. Yeah. And that's the brands I work with understand that. Mm. I've never done a thing because I know it's going to be successful. I've done a thing because I've wanted to do it. I'm currently wearing crop tops. That's my thing this summer. Yeah. So I'm rocking crop tops because I saw a photo of, it might have been Johnny Depp. And I saw a Will Smith just in the 90s. I was like, that's a good look. Yeah. Why is no one doing that? Yeah. And so many people disagree with me. I don't care. I'm doing that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I that's cut a Gymshark shirt into a crop top. And I was like, this is risky. Don't know how the brand's going to feel. The head of sponsorship messaged me and was like, that looks sick. Yeah. I, I had a, a similar thing. Sun Super Hour podcast show partner. Uh, this was last year. You were wearing crop top. I was wearing a crop top. And they're like, <laughs> Glenn. <a> different version, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, no. Not apples with apples. <laughs> so my whole brand is... I'll like, I don't care what you think. Like I'm doing me, if I offend you, sorry, uh, which basically means 50% of people think I'm an arrogant asshole. Yeah, if you offend them, that's on them, not on you. Awesome. Uh, I try and be sincere, but I got, <laughs> I don't know if I told you this, John, I got a tap on the shoulder from Sun Super compliance team telling me to just calm it down a bit, please. It wasn't aggressive. They're just like, oh, you probably just should steer away from that. And we had a good chat, but robust. It, it was robust. It was give and take. But again, brand and people, we've got to work together. A hundred percent. And if someone's coming on board to be part of your brand, they want to be part of your brand. Yeah. If I'm bringing someone on there, it's because they want to be part of who I am. I'm not going to change who I am to fit their brand because that's just going to sacrifice my own integrity and my own brand values. But there's also- And I'll, I'll just say, John, I did overstep the mark and I agree with them. <laughs> Which is rare. <laughs> um, Not the overstepping, the agreeing. <laughs> the agreeing yeah, that's bit. right. Yeah. But the difference in your situation is that they came to you. You didn't reach out to go to them and say, well, do you want to be a sponsor? Yeah, correct. And you, you had that position of power as well. I've never, thankfully, I've never had to be that person. I've always had brands come to me recognizing what I've got there and want to be part of that, which is really cool. Yeah. And I'm very lucky. Totally. Yeah. We're going to have a quick break. I'm going to go out into the other room because I've got to bring some cards in. We've got some conversation starters we're going to ask you. We've okay. got some listener questions. Great. We'll talk about the Instagram, the influencer stuff. Hit me. And we'll, uh, we'll wrap this thing up and put this thing to bed. Cool. Sounds good. All right. Okay. Welcome back, everyone. Now, two years ago when you were on the show, you had about 350K followers. You got around 800,000 at the moment. If we average that out, four grand a week. Uh, talk to us about that journey and what it's been like and what you're doing to engage with those followers and get into your ecosystem that yeah. you can control. Social media is a really fickle thing and you're playing their game. Whether it's Facebook, whether it's Instagram, whether it's YouTube, you've got to tick the box of their algorithm, which is hard and frustrating. Uh, you have to be dynamic in the way you create content. Um, the 4,000 a week, it was never 4,000 a week. There's been times where I haven't grown. I've gone backwards 3,000 in a week and there's been others I've grown 6,000 in a day. Um, there is no successful formula. You can't just be like, this is the thing you do to be successful in social media. You have to work out your brand because my brand is very different to other people's and I've also had to change and, and fluctuate with it. YouTube's a big one for me that I've been doing for two and a half years and I've grown more in the last month than I have in two and a half years mm. just because I finally ticked the right box somehow. Just consistency. And if you're enjoying what you do, it shouldn't be that hard. Mm. It's having fun with it. I think too many people look into the numbers and make that their focus rather than creating good, engaging content and making sure you're looking after the people that are following you. 
that's what I did. I yeah. focused on the people that are already in one platform, made them really happy, and then allowed them to filter into others. And, and a lot of people judge their life by how many followers or likes they get and, and everything else. And, and I know that you've never done that, but has there been any trends where you say, well, if I grew by 6,000 that day and lost the next day, why that occurred? Days of week? Is it yeah, content? Yeah, and there's definitely times I go, what the hell just happened? Like, yeah. I, I, that should have worked. But then the algorithm changed and it didn't work anymore. Wow. Do you think as well, like, and this is just from my own use of Instagram as a person, like everyone else out there, I think the bots are getting less on no, Instagram. No, getting more. Really? I looked at my story this morning and the top three in watching one of my stories were all fake accounts, watching really? stories. They're not engaging, they're not commenting, they were just watching a story on watching the computers just in there, viewing the story, wow. get clicks in. The bots are still there and that definitely is something that happens. People can't... When I'm going backwards in followers, it's generally probably a cleanse of bots. And that's what I'm kind of, that's what I was getting at. It's like, because I, maybe I don't really look where we probably get the bots as well, but obviously not as many. Um, yeah. And that's the thing. It's all relative to how many you've got and what, yeah. what audience you're hitting. And um, I look on a post I posted yesterday in the comments and I had four comments advertising for the one trading guy. I oh, follow this guy for trading. Those ones. In the one video, it's me working out. Yeah. Or dancing or something, yeah. whatever, yeah. something dumb. That's what they were commenting on as bots. I so. got a message yesterday from WhatsApp from Cindy asking how I was. Yeah. Never heard of her. Yeah. What's that? <laughs> yeah. They're in a WhatsApp, Facebook. So, group. with the Instagram, your audience, mm -hmm. what's the main location of your followers? Do you have a percentage breakdown? Yep. Because obviously- It's worldwide. It's- Can you give me some percentages? US, Brazil, Mexico, UK, Australia, India. Right. Is that six? I think that's my top six. Yeah, that'll order. Do. Uh, no, US. Oh, pretty close. <laughs> yeah, pretty US close. Is one, Australia is it? like number four or five. Yeah, wow. US is number one. And yeah. male, female. Uh, eighty percent male. Right. Yeah. yeah, nice. And main age group ish. Uh, twenty four to thirty five yeah, is my biggest, and then it's eighteen to twenty four, and then I think thirty five to forty five. Are yeah. my top three. Do you get a feel for why they're there? Is it is it the content? Is it the brands? The fashion? Is it uh, good-looking yeah, dude? It's a mix of everything. Because I've never built my brand being a niche, I've never been just a fitness guy or just a fashion guy yeah. or just a shirtless guy. Or now just a dancing guy. Just a dancing yeah. guy. Yeah, that's exactly it. I've Yeah, dancing became a thing that oh, I'm no, now like known for. Six months ago, no one was dancing online. Now you'll see his people and doing then, Thanks, TikTok. No, no, no. Everyone's it's not just TikTok. It's I don't, it's because people wanted some frivolity in their social media. Wow. Working out alone was not quite enough there. I've always been a goofy dude that dances by himself in a gym anyway. Yeah. Happened to do it at the start of a video once and was like, oh, that did really well. Tested again two months later, it did really well. And now I was like, great, I just feel myself dancing when I'm doing it anyway. Yeah. Did you do Zumba back in the day? I didn't do Zumba back in the day. I <laughs> should have done Zumba. That was a hot 10 minutes, wasn't it? <laughs> you know what? We actually talked about that in the last podcast too. Really? Zumba. Yeah. We? Fresh yeah. in my mind because I listened yesterday. Yeah. Um, but yes, the, the trend thing is I've never had one niche, so it's really hard to tell what people are there for. Mm. If someone's out there building a business and you're trying to be really good at that business, focus on that business, you will, your audience will just be about that thing. Yeah. So if you're selling shares just target a shares market if you're trying to sell fitness just focus on that mm. as i said just before i've never wanted to be one thing i want to diversify and have options to move into whatever i want because it's all the things i like doing in life and i started social media to be social not to make a business i've been very lucky to make it a business but i can step into fashion or fitness or lifestyle or travel or scuba diving and make that my thing because people have been like yeah we've seen you do that before yeah what, what would you have done if it wasn't your business uh, still probably doing my visual merchandising job. I was a visual merchandiser before, uh, or PT. Mm. I had started showing interest in fitness before I left. But when I left my my full time job, it was to do fashion. I wasn't in fitness at all then. Mm. I just joined a gym two years before. So, mm. if you uh, see, I yeah, I don't love Instagram. If you were if you didn't have your Instagram account and you were starting a business. Again, would you double down on Instagram? Uh, yeah, Instagram's not going anywhere. Don't give up on that. Yeah, it's still a very valid platform. I'm so jaded, aren't I? Yeah. <laughs> what would you do with Facebook? I don't use Facebook. Mm. I barely so use Facebook. Yeah, nothing. It's not an interest to me. I don't like the way it works. The advertising on it and 
they very much got the you pay to show people what you got mm. and I don't like that. And YouTube? I use YouTube. YouTube's yeah. very valid and that YouTube rewards their creators and that's the cool thing with YouTube as opposed to Instagram. I can make money off YouTube without having a brand sponsorship because if it shows a 20 second ad at the front, I get paid for that. Because to be honest, if I was starting my millennial money again from today, I, w- I wouldn't, well, I wouldn't have an Instagram. You'd be because, crazy. Yeah, I know. As someone that does this for a job, you'd be crazy. Yeah. I- Instagram is there. Everyone uses it. If people have five minutes, they're standing waiting for a coffee, they're on Instagram. Yeah. Someone goes to the toilet, they're on Instagram. They're having breakfast, they're on Instagram. Damn it. Now my Damn team's going to hear this. If, if you're spending time, if someone's in public, they're not going to watch a YouTube video in public while they're waiting for their coffee. They'll flick through Instagram. Yeah, true. Mm. Yeah. It's, it's still a very, very relevant platform because it's easy and quick. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. If you're creating my secret, not a secret anymore, entertain, educate, and inspire. They're the three things. If you're ticking those three, th- three things well, off and This is Instagram, interesting. Like, because you it. said um, your thing, like I'm- you know, you talk about if you're selling shares, selling shares. My millennial money, I'm selling encouragement to you because I'm not your guru. I'm not good at every area of money, but if there's a dog in the corner that's going to encourage you to do your thing and be dialed in and have someone who's backing you to be the best version of you with your money, yeah. I'll be that person all day long. Mm. And then I want to sell entertainment with our other podcast, Tie Kickers, which is just me, Dirty Mike, and Asha sitting around reviewing secondhand cars. Like we just want to sell entertainment. Yeah. Because it's mindfulness, it's mindlessness or something. Anyway. Mindlessness, yeah. So let's ask some listeners what they want to ask you. Oh, where do we start? It is an interesting one here. Can yeah. I start? Please. Um, Toby Kewitt, Kewitt, I think I pronounced that correctly. What will you do when the gravy train stops? And, and I think... On the back of our conversation earlier about, well, influencers botch it up and it's short term and once it's done, it's done and go back to your nine to five. Yeah. Um, what's your uh, response to that? If someone sees me as just being an Instagram guy, then they probably don't understand that I have a platform of like, I have an app. Mm. I've got a business. I'm currently developing a sunglass brand. We've developing a supplement line. I've got other areas. Speed dealer sunnies. Yeah, I, I love my speed yeah, dealers. Love it. Well, yeah. my, my Oakley inspired. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wrap around. Speed. Yeah, I've yeah. been wearing them for years. And I know, I I'm love sticking it. to them. Yeah, um, yeah. I'll do. I'm my the '80s called, and they're saying thanks as well. Yeah, mm. that and a crop top. I'm good yeah. to go, baby. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm I'm, d- I'm developing my own things there to work on passive. We've got merchandise for Milestone Strength, yeah. um, which you can get at milestonestrength.threads.com. <laughs> He's picked out that quick. the red light means he's yeah. on, baby. <laughs> oh, yeah. my little promo. There. But yeah, I've got things there that are much, much bigger than just social media. Social media helps me promote those things, but I've got... And I also have several social media but, platforms. But that's good business redundancy in any business. Yeah. It's, yeah. Ver- versus other businesses online that are just making hay while the sun shines without thinking left, right. Well, it's the extreme example, Qantas, COVID shut it down. Oh, you can buy freaking care packs and get... You know, you can buy Qantas pajamas now. It's like, all right, we've got to pivot. Okay, so Qantas has realized, well, Qantas needs to be a bigger brand than just flights, yeah. flying people around. Mm. And I'm very lucky to be in an industry that is only going to grow. Yeah, COVID has shown people they need to look after their health. Mental health is a huge part and fitness comes into that. And we've, as I said, Lane, my business partner, is a psych major. He yeah. understands how that works. I'm massive on positivity and being a upbeat, look for the light type person. I want to teach people how to do that. So we've got that side of things that we understand the fitness ties in directly. We're not going anywhere. Yeah. Mm. No, it's awesome. Emma Russell asked, and I think we covered it earlier, but have you ever compromised with your morals for professional gain? Uh, (laughs) He's here today. (laughs) Although not much gain here. (laughs) Yeah. Waste an hour and a half. Yeah, basically. Um, (laughs) No. Okay. I can honestly say nothing have I done in my past in my job do I regret. It's either been something I've gained from knowledge or I've gained money which has allowed me to do something else. I definitely did the influencer thing in the early days because it wasn't a thing. Mm. I wasn't uh, – I'm going to sound arrogant, whatever. No, I was an influencer before it was a thing. Yeah. I had an audience when no one had an audience. So six years ago, I still had a couple of thousand followers and I did a teeth whitening thing. There was no agencies that were hiring. There was like 
there's social media agencies now. I was employed by a modeling agency as a social media guy. And I got jobs doing some modeling stuff. Like I'm five foot eight. I'm not built like a model. Nate here in the studio, he's like, oh, geez, Nate's big. I'm like, oh, it's kind of got the Arnold Schwarzenegger effect happening. Everyone thinks he's seven foot. Yeah. Um, but he's not. Yeah. And, and that's not a diss or anything. I'm just No, it's fine. Yeah. I'm, I'm aware how, how tall I am. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've seen myself Glenn, before. Glenn, Glenn just called you a short ass. But um, <laughs> you, you were the pioneer or one of the pioneers doing it when you were copying backlash, when no one else is doing it. Why are you out there showing your body, et cetera, et cetera? Weren't you or like that? Was dressing up ago. in Terrigal, wearing a suit on the street and taking yeah. photos when yeah. everyone's like, what's that guy doing? Mm. But hey, I made money from it. And yeah. I don't regret that because it allowed me to step in this and be ahead of the game. And, and that's a message, isn't it, for everyone out there? It's like, don't worry about the negativity you're getting. Live your passion, follow your dreams, do what you enjoy. Yeah. Is it a pain in the ass when dickheads like me come up to you and say hi at breakfast? No, not at all. Okay. I love that. I, I genuinely love that. When someone says hi, I was at Lucky Surf Co. Yep. Uh, having coffee with a friend the other day and a young guy came up and interrupted a conversation very politely to ask if he'd take a photo with me. So good. Made my day. Did he was do? so sweet and so nice. And he sent me a message on Instagram being like, sorry, I was so awkward. It was lovely. Like it's, I, nothing makes my day more than seeing that you've had an impact on someone beyond social media because mm. it's one thing there, but for them to take time of their day to come say hi to you, that's amazing. Yeah. And why people turn up to seminars. Some people turn up to seminars because they don't really care about fitness, but they just want to come hang out. Sick. Yeah. Come hang out. We'll have fun. I'll teach you something while we're here. Yeah. So Jackson Rule asks, what was the most effective way to lock in work with brands in the very beginning, sub 10,000 followers? I had an agency uh, or sub 10,000, it didn't happen. When that happened, influencing wasn't a thing. So I had 10,000 followers before it was something you get paid to do. Um, I think I made money about 20,000 and that was like $50 to advertise whatever it was, teeth whitening or Clark's shoes. Um, it's changed now. I wouldn't really know where to start now, mm. to be honest. I, I think, and this is just my experience um, hearing about Instagram and stuff, Possibly uh, with these micro influencers like your 10K or I mean, 100 grand is probably micro compared to you, but um, sometimes the algorithm, they can have a good effect if their engagement levels are higher. Oh, absolutely. I re that's one of the things in terms of, it's not really towards money, how to build brands, but how to build a following that's going to get noticed is, as I said before, entertain, educate and inspire yeah. and engage with your audience. Hmm. I have, as you said, almost 800,000 followers and I write back to every single DM I can. I read every single DM I get sent, which is hundreds and hundreds a day because that's my job. What, like, what do I have to gain from just like ignoring people's messages? If someone says something to you, even if it's just like, I will never respond to a high, but I'll give like a double tap. I've acknowledged them, they're there. If someone asks me a question, I'll always write back because that's going to allow them to feel like part of the brand and I'm no longer just a person on the internet. I'm a real person they've engaged with. So build that audience up from the ground. You know, this is how we come about. I slid into his DM three years ago. Giddy up. Yeah. Sleazy, but it works. Oh, I mean, <laughs> what? quite corny. <laughs> yeah. Luckily, the AVO ended. Um. <laughs> but yeah, that, that's exactly it. Some, the grenade. The mm. CEO of Grenade slid into my DMs. Mm. He sent me a DM, hey, I saw you post this thing. Do you want to have a chat? Yeah. Great. That's now turned into a long-term ongoing partnership where yeah. both brands are super happy and we're growing because of that. Awesome. I mm. think for people starting out, engage with your audience, comment back to people. It gets a bit hard sometimes. You get hundreds of comments. Yeah. It's time consuming. But Are you the only person that has access to- I run to my social, yes. Yeah. My business partner runs Milestone. Yeah. I still can get on there and engage if yeah. I want. Yeah. He runs out. I run Nathan. Yeah. And then YouTube is also run by my videographer. So he will help with that because um, it, it's time consuming, mm. getting yeah. back and commenting. And just like the YouTube process, because you have to approve some comments and it spams things. So he'll go through and filter that stuff. But Instagram's on me. Yeah. 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 Interesting. Nice. That's wild. I'm just having a read through these questions. Look, I think a lot of the questions that you asked everyone, we've kind of covered them off. But the last segment of the show... We're going to, um, we've got these conversation starter cards and then money ones. Azaria Bell, the host of Gen Z Money and myself, we've put these together. And again, you can look in the show notes and buy them if you want. Um, and they're really fun. We're going to get you to choose four questions. At random? At random. Yeah, great. Just pass me four. 
right. <laughs> Saves trying to reach across awkwardly. Oh, not those four. <laughs> <laughs> and we want you to read the question and answer each one. Okay. First question is, what legacy do I hope to leave behind when I die? Oh, wow. <laughs> That's a... <laughs> Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Goodness gracious. You're you wearing a helmet on that skateboard? <laughs> yeah. 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 Just watch out for the cars. The legacy I have to leave behind, I want to encourage and inspire people to live a fitter, healthier life. I think the fitness thing for me is a genuine passion and beyond get a six pack, it's actually to be healthier and happier because I've never been happier than when I've been the fitter I am. Mm. And I work at this consistently and I love training and I, I run and I surf and I scuba and I do all that stuff because I genuinely enjoy being active and it makes me a happier person. I want to teach other people to do that too. Mm. Question Love one, it. down. Was that too Love deep? It. Loved it, perfect. Second question is, what have you wanted to do but you were afraid to try? Uh, nothing. I, I'm not a particularly scared person. I don't have any major fears. I've done all the things. I've skydived, I've bungee jumped, I've... Have you bunched something out of a helicopter? The opportunity hasn't arose yet, okay. but I would. Sweet. Yeah. I w- I'd like to do a hot air balloon as well. That'd be cool. Yeah. Well, at least if you do any major bounce back, you're not going to get spliced. You don't bounce that much. I will tell you this though, when, talking about bungee. <laughs> when I did, I did it in New Zealand and the first time I did it, I went to, I can't remember what it's called. It's over a river. Yeah. And they ask you before, do you want to go on the water? And it was the end of winter and I was like, no, I'm wearing clothes. I don't want to get drenched. And they're like, that's fine. Do it this way. If you jump out in bungee, they're like, if you jump out, generally it slows your momentum down. If you drop straight down, you normally go in. So they're like, we've, we've got the distance. You should be fine. I jumped out. It's for a video. It's a big swan dive. I went up to my knees and I, I got a black eye from it because my eyes were open. I hit the water oh. so hard. It was the biggest shock to my sister. The video looked amazing. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, don't trust bungee jumping. Yeah. Would you do the Fiji and bungee jump out of the... Uh, makeshift scaffolding with a... Um, that doesn't seem safe. Yeah. yeah. As I said it, off earlier in the podcast, style. everything's yeah. in like an educated caution. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not okay. caution. That's Sweet. breaking your neck. Uh, what do you perceive to be your greatest accomplishment in life so far? Uh, I've maintained my friendship circles. I've still got my friends that I've had since the beginning and I make time for them and my family. I'm really proud of that. Mm. I've never been too busy for anyone. And my, my life gets busy. I mm. travel the world and I, I get away and I've still got the same friends and they're still there when I get back and I've maintained that. Yeah. I'm proud of that. And yeah. So, last question. God, I picked some heavy ones. I know. <laughs> What's your biggest fear when it comes to money? Um, not being able to support a family. Mm. When I'm ready to have a family, which is not quite yet, but when I'm <laughs> ready for that stage, I want to make sure that they're given every opportunity that I had as a kid and more. Mm. Yeah, nice. So, Very working good. towards that. Love it. Well answered. Uh, you can find Nathan on Instagram uh, at Nathan. You can find Milestone Strength at Milestone Strength. Yep. YouTube is, is Nathan. And also check out the podcast. The Milestone Strength Show. Love it. Beautiful. Thank you, Thanks Nathan. Thanks for having me, guys. Thank All right. Awesome. See you soon. Bye.